All right, I was um, asked a question um, fairly recently about the the Buba Kiki effect in the connection to um, to uh, how we visualize images in the brain and what is the relation to meaning with um, sound as language and essentially the um i i related this back to the difference of um of formants for phonemes created by the mouth while speaking and and colors because colors are supposed to be a just a a qualia that's supposedly not real it's just a an illusion that our brain creates in the in the real world um there is no color but um so this this paradox is solved by the non-commutative phase logic and i, I just did a a new blog post on this and Essentially, I was reading this book a couple days ago that I just started out called, um, you know, Solving Quantum Paradoxes and by uh, Yakir Aranahov and his research group. And Aranahov is the one who's led the weak measurement experiments where you use a entangled photon and then you use the Heisenberg matrices to demonstrate that there is a a non-local field essentially like an ether ether field what he calls nega particles so it's not just um reverse charge as antimatter but it's also reverse um space time and so this is before the collapse of the wave measurement into the uh, Planck's constant as a symmetric um, H bar, which is the um, the the necessity to use a uh, pi over four um, because of the sphere symmetry, and and this is tied to the Boltzmann's constant as the equipartition principle. In statistics so Peter Pesic um, explains in his book on music in modern science that um, Planck was directly inspired by the equal tempered music theory to come up with his idea of the Planck's Planck's constant as as the basis for the distribution of um, energy of heat as temperature according to the the frequency and inverse um, wavelength. And so what this book on the quantum paradox is arguing that if you're using temperature only, then you get a divergence of the um, calculus but the the integral diverges when you're combining all the temperatures together but if you use the Planck's constant based on the statistical mechanics from Boltzmann and as the equal partition principle then you then the the change of color based on the temperature is the avoiding it's the way the wavelengths are avoiding the divergence of um, of frequency, and so in my 2012 book, I um, quote a biologist who um, I I discovered in the basement of a bookstore, and I immediately was intrigued by this guy. Because he basically says all of evolution is an is a asymmetrical sine wave or some I don't know if I have the 
specific quote in my 2012 book. But um, in this this quote, he's talking about the connection between the vowel formants, because he says that the vowel um, the vowels do not change, in, even though the pitch changes from a person talking. So the he says that the formants are the a change, they maintain the same difference by changing the um, higher and lower frequencies, which would be a change in the uh, the timbre, essentially. And so, um, the how this is done is by you're defining the harmonics. The the um, is that the uh, the other book the Aranhoff book, or no, it's, I can't remember, there's a third book I quote, also called Scene with Sound, um, but let's see if I remember that quote, but at, at any rate, the, uh, the, when you're studying the harmonics, the oscillators, they're, they're essentially the same as equal partition principle. Because you're dealing with um, the wavelengths as the, you know, the logarithms from the original uh, origin of music theory, based on the irrational number as the geometric mean squared. Uh, so the octave is defined as the geometric mean squared, and that's how you're converting the non-commutative time frequency back into a a wavelength. And essentially, if you read um, Nobel physicist um, uh, De Hooft, um, Gerard, uh, yeah, Gerard De Hooft, I think that's his first name, and um, that he he co-wrote that with uh, Martin Vandermark, and the the article is called um, "Why is or Light is Heavy." And so what they're stating is that the, um, I lost my train of thought here, but essentially the, essentially all matter, all matter is light. And the reason Mark, um, Martin Vandermark, he does a follow-up article on this and they're, they're arguing that, well, since light inherently has a relativistic mass because it has a, a zero rest mass, but it it always eternally has a kinetic uh, energy. It, it's not the same as class as classical uh, kinetic and potential energy. It's the um, quantum um, potential energy as the relativistic mass due to the De Broglie-Einstein relation. So it's the um, the the mass is defined by the momentum of light that's directly proportional to the frequency. And so the, the relativistic mass is the, um, the negative frequency and reverse time. So, um, because of this, then each electron with the one half spin is actually created by, it's actually due to the relative, relativistic mass of light and so the reason why a photon is emitted as a subharmonic of the electron as as Schrodinger realized but he could not explain what is the source of this light emission as a subharmonic or quantum beat undertone the source is this uh, non-commutative time frequency that's negative um it's due to a discrete spectral because of the quantum measurement is a discrete measurement with time as the operator so it's inherently unobservable but the weak measurements as Yakir Aranhoff explains uh demonstrate the non-commutative time frequency as a an observable um by using the Heisenberg uh, inner uh, product the, of the matrices that's non-commutative. So you can, 
you can measure those changes in the the momentum as the frequency of the negative frequency at, while the um, particle as a location is, is zero because it's a constant due to the imaginary number that's squared for the probability amplitude. So the... Um, so this is the secret of the origin of color because essentially when light is a particle, then it's due to the um, the uh, let me get rid of that shadow. It's due to the um, the twisting a Mobius strip, a Mobius strip of the light of the time frequency energy. So you have a twisting. In the, in, in the zero point of space. So it's literally a twisting of time and frequency that inherently cannot be seen because it's um, faster than time frequency uncertainty. Just as a Klein bottle, a Klein bottle cannot be visualized in three-dimensional space because it's two um, Mobius strips put together. And so that's why they also use a... Um, a non-commutative torus to as a as a block sphere because the block sphere w requires the time as an operator for the one half spin to then be 720 degrees uh, to get a particle of the electron. So essentially, that is the relativistic mass of light, and then the color that we see is due to the that twisting of the light. Um, and so the the ohm sound that's heard deep in the hearts during meditation or the, the ohm of the universe, it also called the ohm of light, is therefore this experience of the non-commutative, non-dual, non-local time frequency through the heart that's listened to. And therefore, it's, it's not a vowel because it's not a formant. It's, it's a the pure... Um, undertone of the what's called the quantum undertone so it's a um it's also called the shadow of light um uh, or the from the future so it would be a it's it's explained in sono fusion because you you can achieve this with the ultrasound um splitting the water um with the protons and the electrons and i, I just found a new article from olivier oliver l riser um, who I quote from the a actual matrix plan, and he says all oh, the protons are yang and the electrons are yin. And that's true, but it's not the wan chi. The wan chi is the secret of integrating the yang and yin chi, and that's the real alchemy, um, and which is achieved through the, um, pur the pyramidal neurons that uh, Stuart Hameroff explains so um in my my latest blog post i go into how it's now proven that the main difference between chimpanzees and humans is that we have way more microtubules in the pyramidal neurons as the horizontal um dendritic uh axons or i you know, I'm maybe I'm getting some of the terminology wrong there, but the spines or whatever the so that this is what integrates the right and left brain through the you know with the corpus callosum and the so the pyramidal neurons are there's a, I have an image of a spect uh, blood flow st um, study based on Islamic prayer. Uh, on nothingness it's a, a deep um, Islamic prayer so essentially the mantra when you say Allah you're connecting the vagus nerves of the the right and left vagus nerve of the brain and so you're this is why you you have to put the tongue against the roof of your mouth in during meditation whether it's in China or India because when you say Allah you are um, activating, like connecting the negative and 
positive polarity of the yang and yin chi. So the yin chi goes down the front and the yang chi goes up the back. And so it's the, the, um, the uh, right side vagus nerve is the yang chi of the um, back of the lower body. So it's the, um, it's the secret yang within the yin of the lower body. Um, and this is what the um, alchemy is based on, is that the, the males are yang externally, but they have to activate the yang internally, which is female in the earth energy. And so alchemy is this reversal of the direction of time um, based on light. So um, Alan Kahn's is the only one who's figured this out. He's saying that the origin of thermodynamics is not randomness, but it's actually the non-commutative um, two, two and three as infinity. And the reason it's infinity is because it's this inner uh, matrix. It's the inner product of the matrices before you square it for the quantum probability. And so it's unobservable in the standard uh, science, except for these weak measurements of Aranhoff, uh, his research group. But, it, but you can listen to it and logically infer it based on quantum biology through the ultrasound. And this is why uh, Stuart Hamroff, he got an ultrasound treatment to his brain to uh, activate this non-local, um, non-commutative Wan Chi energy, and but our, our collagen is aligned vertically ninety percent, and that's piezoelectric, and then it, so it increases the ultrasound, and then also through meditation, the highest sound we hear externally when we listen to it internally, that's proven through the tinnitus research that I quote, that's proven to um, resonate the whole brain as ultrasound. And the, and the reason why ultrasound is key is because it's a mechanical vibration, but it, it also then transduces into the electromagnetic um, microwave spec, uh, frequency of the, through the, the megahertz going into the gigahertz. And so the, this is what Aniri bond, Bondio Padhe calls the uh, triplets of, of triplets because you're, you're having basically these octaves that overlap the ultrasound as the common frequency point that, that transduces the mechanical to the, um, electromagnetic and then, um, the, the, so essentially you're transducing the electrochemical jing in, or the neural hormones into the, the neurotransmitters as the, trypto, the tryptophan of the um, tubulin that's within the tubulin, these proteins and um, neurotransmitters. So that, so the, um, the uh, charge is then stored in the cerebral spinal fluid that, you know, the pineal gland, it transduces the blood into increased um, yang chi as the cerebral spinal fluid. And, and then the, when the water is split from the ultrasound pressure, that increases also the, that's the yang chi and yang chi is the proton and is delocalized. And that's the ultrasound signal that, that the microsecond um, is faster than the, um, prefrontal cortex thinking at the one half second um, milli or 500 milliseconds. So the Benjamin Libet studies have shown that we our true consciousness is from the future due to the ultrasound uh, transduction that then reverse, reverse, reverses in time back to the uh, thinking at the, um, 500 millisecond origin, which is our deep, also our deep, uh, dreamless sleep is the two hertz, which would be the 